Hello everyone, welcome to the original Next Level Gaming Podcast. I am Mike Mullis and I'm here with an all-star team tonight. I have uh, Enrique Castellanos, my regular. How you doing, Enrique? I'm doing very well, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one of our one of our hopeful new regulars, if we can just keep him coming, Brian, a.k.a. Worry Wart from the Twitters. How you doing, brother? Oh, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and joining us tonight, our special guest. He is more of a rock star than he wants to lead on to be, and he's shaking his head no, but he knows it. He is Danny, a.k.a. Southbound 110. How you doing, brother? Oh, doing, doing really well. Thanks so, for having me. Appreciate thanks for it. joining us tonight. So, um... Yeah, it's kind of going to be a quiet podcast. Nothing really happened today. We didn't have any news, so you don't. You don't. How much news today? Yeah, I, you know, if you if you blinked, you missed anything. So, uh, so now everybody knows Gamescom started today, kind of in earnest. Microsoft had their conference this morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time and whatever time it was, German time. Um, and interestingly Maybe enough, four. yeah, something like that. And interestingly enough, they were the only ones to actually have a press conference this year. Everybody knows Sony did not. They're saving theirs for the Paris Game Show. So uh, they had the floor today, and they monopolized it quite well. So before we jump into all the stuff that they talked about and all the things we talk about individually, uh, guys, I wanted to get your thoughts on what the what your what your thoughts were on the actual press conference itself. Um, how it affected you as a as a gamer? Um, you know, I know Enrique, Brian, and uh, Danny. You guys are all multi-platform owners, so um, you know this can you can tell us how it affects you, kind of as an Xbox gamer and as a regular gamer. Uh, you know, Danny, you're our guest. Start us off. <laughs> oh, great! Spotlight's on me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. You know what? Um... I'm I'm kind of indifferent. I have to admit, as big of an Xbox fan that I am, I I wasn't blown away. Everybody's like, "Oh, it was the greatest, and it was better than E3." And I'm hard pressed to say I wasn't really that impressed coming away from it all. I mean, there was there was some phenomenal gameplay, and the games do look good, but altogether, 100% show, I really wasn't that dazzled by it. No, fair, very fair, Brian. Uh, well, I, I knew what was going to be shown because they said, you know, we would see Scalebound, Crackdown, Quantum Break, and the gameplay that I saw of Scalebound, even though it was pre-alpha, it looked really good. Um, looks like something I'd be really interested in. Quantum Break always looks good to me, so I can't wait for that. Tomb Raider, I mean, did that look great, or was I seeing something else? I know, and we're going to get into these. We're going to get into all of these individually for sure. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think maybe I was expecting what they showed, so I was, I enjoyed it. I don't know. I think people were expecting three more things that we never heard of, which is pretty unrealistic. But all in all, I mean, for me, it demonstrated the differences between Microsoft and Sony. I'll get into that later on, but there's a huge difference that I think people gloss over when they try and compare Apple to Apple. It's really an apples to oranges comparison, and I'll get into it later on. Fair enough, Enrique. I uh, actually really I enjoy the show. I, you know, it's like Worry said. I mean, we knew what was going to be shown, um, but I was um, pleased with, you know, what I saw with, um, uh, you know, with Forza Six, uh, with Rise of the Tomb Raider. I mean, that that looked great. Um, and then you know, Scalebound. I mean, I was really, really, really impressed with Scalebound. Even pre-alpha, I mean, it, the game looks like something that I would definitely, um, definitely get into. Uh, and then Quantum Break, I mean, it's Remedy. And, um, you know, I think uh, the game is going to be a, a must-have title for the Xbox One. So, um, and then, you know, there were some other announcements that were made that were, that really, that I, I kind of liked. The, the DVR announcement was one. Uh, and then some of the things they showed with um, uh, some of the um, uh, indie games, too, uh, I thought was pretty good as well. So, um, all in all, I, you know, I enjoyed the show. I thought it was a pretty good show for them. Okay. So my take on it lies somewhere um, actually between uh, you guys and and Danny, actually. It wasn't that I was indifferent. I thought it was a good, solid show. Um, I think that, you know, guys like Kudo Sonoda and, um, and Aaron and Phil and those guys really hyped up 
the show as if something else really magical was going to happen, like there was going to be some other announcement that would take us by complete surprise, and uh, that didn't happen. Um, and so I, I kind of felt like it was a good show. I mean, they did what they set out to do, uh, no doubt about it. I just, I was looking for something that I think wasn't there, and I'll be the first to admit, it could be my fault. It could be that I've come to a point where I go into these shows now just expecting some sort of wow factor, and I didn't get it, but it doesn't mean that they 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 stunk it up. It doesn't mean that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So it, that's that's where I kind of sit on it. Um, you know, I'm... <sighs> You know what it is? I think even even the hardcore fans, like hard hardcore Xbox fans, I think at this point there ex- there's almost an unrealistic expectation that every single time they're supposed to just, you know, they're the only ones that have to hit it out of the park every time. So, you know, stuff that I saw like the ancillary stuff, every 360 games with gold now is backwards compatible. So you're getting instead of two games on the Xbox One, four games a month. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. The whole, you know, I don't want to get into it right now, but the Windows 10, the way things interact between, you know, one platform and the other, stuff like that. Plus, you know, the investment in the new IP, yeah. um, you know, the Halo, Halo Wars 2, stuff like that. So for me, it, it was a good show. But I think that there's this, there's this pressure for them to just always hit it out of the park that I don't think you could ever do that. So, well, you know, and, and that's why I say I'm indifferent because it was a very good show, but they, for me, it didn't have that drop the mic moment like E3 uh-huh. did when that, when they announced backwards compatibility and I was in the audience and it, I mean, everybody's hands just went straight to the air. It, yeah. I mean, that, that was it. Boom. E3 what could they, won. what could they have announced though at Gamescom that would be, I don't know. Games. I don't know. But, but, but like Mike said. They they had they had been hyping this and oh it's it's just on par with E three you know the greatest lineup and, and like you said we were expecting Crackdown Quantum Break Scalebound we knew that was coming we knew Laura Crab was gonna be you know mm-hmm. Tomb Raider was gonna be mm-hmm. you know shown but I don't know I, I maybe I was expecting just a little bit more or something just to kind of throw me off balance well and I didn't get it and yeah, yeah go ahead Rodrigue go ahead. I was going to say, you know, I, I really think, too, um, yeah, they didn't have a, a Megaton uh, uh, moment, you know, like they had at E3 with the backwards compatibility, but I think it solidifies a lot of the hard work that they put into this. I mean, this they've really come, they've done a complete 180 now, you know, from 2013 now to 2015, and, and I think that this kind of really just solidifies the hard work that they put into a lot of the games, a lot of the first-party stuff, so... Um, you know, I, I again, I think that's that's what I came away with. Well, wow, these guys are really working their butts off to really deliver value, you know, to the console, and then you know, great um, exclusives and, and, and titles. So, um, you know, I, I I just feel like you know, with that alone, um, you know, that's worth that's worth the price of admission for me. You know, I and I I so I'm trying. And it's hard because, you know, this is a conference. This is something where, you know, Sony had no presence today at all. And Microsoft had this chance to just, you know, take the ball and, and drive it to the hole. Um, but to separate out, I, that is that is 100% accurate. I mean, the if you look at the lineup and just if you step back and you say, here's what Microsoft has done since – E3 2013 to solidify their first party uh, portfolio, which is what Phil Spencer said that they were going to do. To that point, I think Phil Spencer has nailed it. I mean, listen to this. This is Quantum Break, Scalebound, Crackdown, Killer Instinct, which is, you know, they're they're continuing to work on, ReCore, Gears of War, Halo Wars, Sea of Thieves, um, Cuphead, I mean, the the list for 2015 and 2016 is massive. You know, we don't we haven't even gotten to uh, you know Rare Replay just launched. Gears of War Ultimate is coming out this month. Um, there are countless little indie games that are that are first on Xbox that 
you know, are coming out throughout this month. Um, there, we haven't gotten a Halo, we haven't gotten a Forza, we haven't gotten the Rise of the Tomb Raider, and that's just to get to 2016. Their lineup is massively impressive. I'm not debating that at all. I think it, I, it, you know, Brian, you said it, and and I'm guilty of it, totally guilty of it. I was, ex- I, I had this this expectation of just, you know. Phil Spencer coming out before the end of the show to show off Halo Wars and say, oh, and by the way, and there wasn't that, I mean, Halo Wars 2 is going to be really cool. That, to me, isn't the, oh, before we go, I got one more thing to show you, and then it's Halo exactly. 2, or exactly. Halo 3, when, rather. When he goes, well, hold on, before I leave, you know, I just want to leave you with this, and then I, I totally thought it was going to be something bigger. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there, there is a lot of Halo Wars fans. I, I don't yeah. discount that one bit, but me... I'm not interested in it. So for me, it really it, well. You know, was a you, know what I, so. you know what I ask people though is that's where I get with this unrealistic expectation. When everybody says, you know, I was just expecting something else. What else could? What would my? What could Microsoft do? What else could they do? What would be the megaton? Kajima on stage. That you would want to do. <laughs> Kajima. They could have brought Kajima out. <laughs> See, Kajima. I'm never gonna live this down, am I? Kojima on stage with Yu Suzuki singing, you say tomato, and I say tomato. <laughs> uh, all right, you, uh, look. <laughs> what, could, what could be the Megaton? Like, um, what is- I, show, you know, I, honestly, um, a Megaton would have been a timed exclusivity with Mass Effect. That would have no. been. No, no, not more no time. That, that, but, but we, that, we knew that, Mass Effect wasn't going to be there, though. Cost. No yeah. more time. Uh, you know what? You know what? Yes, exactly. I, I would have said Mass Effect. If they would have brought Mass Effect out, that would have blown me away. As a, just as to time, bring it out. Just to bring it out. Hmm. Because nobody's seen anything of it yet. This is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's why, for me, Homefront was was pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Homefront was interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that cry engine, I mean, even yeah. going back to 360, I, I don't know if there's another engine that's on par with graphically. Uh, that, the gameplay looked very, very pretty. That it did. I agree it with did. that. That cry engine is the beast. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll arise. Well, this is all, I mean, honestly, this is all good insight. And no, I don't think anybody here is wrong. Um, you know, I think we all had different expectations and, you know, I, I actually, I, I, and again, as I stepped back, you know, and looked at kind of the reaction from what I would consider real gamers, there's a lot of it. There was a lot of excitement coming out of today. There, there's, if you are, if you are a gamer, Forget if you're an Xbox gamer, if you're a PlayStation gamer, if you're a Nintendo gamer. If you are a gamer straight out, if you care about video games, how in the world do you not uh, could you not look at coming out of this conference and going, I have to have an Xbox? Because there's if you don't, all right, let's say let's say you don't like Quantum Break. You've got seven, eight, nine other games to choose from that you could pick from. If you don't like Halo Five. You're one of those mutants that don't like Halo. You, <laughs> you, you've got nine, ten other games to choose is, is from. That, is that a Fallout reference? Or... <laughs> <laughs> is that a segue to Fallout? Just, just no, there was no Fallout to be had today. <laughs> but no, I mean, if you, I, I, you know, the. The PlayStation has a set of games that are must must have games. We know that, you know whether it's Uncharted, whether it's uh, God of War, whether it's you know, and you have these that you can pick from. It has been hard for Microsoft to prove to people that they weren't, you know, how how many times have all of all of you guys heard this? Oh, the Xbox is just a shooter box. It's just the dude bro box, you know. It's not a How, game console first. Right. It's not a game console first, TV, 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 which, you know, look, they have to own some of that. I understand. But how could you come out of this press conference with everything that they showed you today and go, yeah, I don't – I'm the Xbox One isn't for me. There's well, so much. You know, you know why? Because the naysayer I'm – sorry, Brian, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, go ahead, buddy. But uh, that DVR thing, it, people are going to nitpick the – Heck out of that! I'll tell you that right now. Well, Southbound—they're doing it already. 
No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like the, the haters. Oh, as soon as they heard DVR. Oh, I mean, I'm sure Twitter wasn't ablaze. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. Listen, I mean, when you're asking how can somebody say, you know, there's not something there. The only people that honestly today say, you know, well, there's just not anything I'm interested in on that other platform. That's a lie. I mean, yeah. you know, you could, there's always at least one thing that you see and you say, wow, that looks really cool. Now, I'm not saying people buy a console for one game, but, you know, when you ask that question, how can you, you know, say there's nothing? You know, there's a whole lot of people like that now that just, you know, there, there's this there's this divide that's going on. I, I don't know what what caused it, but obviously there's a ton of games that you can only play on the Xbox. Mm -hmm. And there are games that you can only play on the PlayStation. And to say, well, you know, nah, nothing really interests me even after all that. It's If you're doing that, you're either really, really young and you're supposed to behave like that because you're really, really young or you're really, really old and you just missed the boat on what being a gamer and playing video games is. I yeah, think, I think yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I, I agree. That's and I know, point. Enrique, you, you were fired up about the, you know, the DVR thing and what the what the reaction was going to be. Yeah, well, you know, I just think it, it's, it's just kind of the point now where, you know, anytime, um, you know, added features or or options are given to gamers that are not that are non game related, I don't understand the the mind frame of that's bad. You know, like I, I don't understand how you know an added feature or, or giving someone an option is a bad thing. I mean, you know, if that's the case, you shouldn't use your cell phone then to take pictures. You know, go out and buy one of those archaic cell phones that just, you know, does calls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, game consoles aren't just game consoles anymore. That's such an archaic uh, mind frame. Uh, you know, obviously these things are evolving, and they're going to evolve even further past, you know, what we traditionally know as game consoles today. But we talked about this, you know, last week on the last podcast, that there could be a time where maybe that game consoles are just as simple as an application, an app that you find on your TV or on your cell phone. You know, so, you know, I just, you know, this this whole notion of, you know, options or non-game related options is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's an option. It's something that could potentially, you know, add value to a gamer. And if it doesn't add value to you, it doesn't necessarily make it bad either. You know what I mean? You know, when we first started the podcast tonight, I said that the differences between Microsoft and Sony were highlighted even more for me personally. And what mm -hmm. I meant by that was Microsoft is not a traditional console company. You know what I, you know what I'm trying to say here? It's not mm -hmm. you know, the Windows 10 stuff, the PC, the cross platform. When I when I look at what Microsoft does, I compare them more to Apple and Google than I do to Sony. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Sony Sony oh, to me, yeah, yeah, Sony friend. to me is more of a traditional console company and that's where you say where, you know, a lot of these features come up like DVR and why do people get upset? Because people aren't used to the type of company in gaming that Microsoft is. They're used to the type of company that Sony is, that Sega was, that Nintendo is mm -hmm. in console video gaming. So, you know, they're just not either willing to accept that other stuff or they just don't like hearing about it because they feel like their sacred space that they have that's just console gaming where I go to the store, I buy a game, it's only on my closed box, I put the disc in, I play, and that's it. That's the world that they're used to. That's the world mm -hmm. that, they, that they love. So, you know, the, the show highlighted to me, it's almost a futile argument to compare the two companies in, in, in what they're doing because they're going mm -hmm. in such completely different directions. But we're even even Sony's adding, you know, other features or other entertainment features, you know, the TV shows, the, um, mm -hmm. you know, the ability to stream, you know, games through PS Now. I mean, so, I mean, they're doing things that are somewhat, you know, outside of what we define yeah. as a traditional game console. You're right, but they don't have to worry about, like, they, they don't have their own operating system, you know? They don't have, no, the, no, yeah. they don't have the footprint in PC gaming and mm -hmm. console gaming. They don't have the proliferation of phones, tablets, you know, devices that all run the, the operating system. So it's just completely different what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I, you know, I agree with you, and, and apologies, Mike. Um, no, please. What, what I would say is I think when it comes to the whole DVR thing, it's such the leper when you think of TV, 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 when they first announced it. Yeah. So I think I think people are just like skittish, like, uh-oh, 
Yeah, here comes like, TV oh again. Gosh. Yeah, okay. no, exactly. Like, didn't we see this road? You know, oh. this is how it started. It, it just fell out of the gate. Okay, but but see, and and here's here would be my 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 reaction to that. They put Mike Ibarra somewhere. 30 minutes into the conference after mm-hmm. they showed you Quantum Break Crackdown and Scalebound they didn't even touch that right out of the gate and it mm-hmm. was like you know alright let me spend a couple minutes on this let me tell you about this oh and then by the way here's the UI and backward compatibility so he went right back to games it's not like he mm-hmm. did this long drawn out um, demonstration he didn't pull mm-hmm. out his phone to show he could watch the stuff on his phone he just he said it's coming this is something that you the fans asked for and if you notice every time they bring out a new feature now how do they start how do they start it you the fans have asked for this so their wording has even changed on how they per, on how they promote this remember on sunday night when we were talking about how yeah. you know how people how how microsoft this has such a hard time telling people about this stuff mm-hmm. they're even taking these in a different tact and then right after like i said he spent i think he spent three minutes on it and moved on to something game related and then they never talked about another non-game related thing the rest of the conference yeah so you know i agree with danny it's it's all but this but, but it's a double-edged sword because me personally I like the TV features. I love my Connect. I, you know, my wife uses it every day. You know, I, I'll be in another room. I hear Xbox mute or you know Xbox this, and I, and I sometimes I just want to giggle. My wife curses on my Connect. <laughs> <laughs> you She's know, like, that it, damn it, thing it, doesn't listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah, I get that too. It's like it does not listen to me. I'm like, you gotta use a monotone voice. My husband only talks to you. He doesn't talk yeah. to me. <laughs> I said my Xbox doesn't cheat on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, we came downstairs to watch TV before the podcast, and I heard my wife yelling at it, "Xbox on, Mike! The damn Xbox won't turn on." So I had to come down, and and then I think I had an update or something because the the power brick yeah. was amber. So I had to explain to her I had to actually hit the button this time. <laughs> so, um, but you know, it, I just yeah. that's the maybe start on updates. My wife, <laughs> <laughs> program. I had to take the preview program off the one in the front room because she was like, every time I turn the TV on, it's an update. <laughs> now, but, you know, we use that so much. I mean, we, yeah. you know, we, I have my direct TV into the HDMI. I mean, I use it daily. Yeah, and but, so. See, that's the difference, though, Mike. I mean, that's the difference between them. They're, they're so different now. Microsoft is so different from Sony. They're so different from just a traditional console gaming machine and people are trying it's like taking an apple and a grapefruit they both have and people are saying well they both have seeds they both have seeds in them so let's compare them but they're so yeah. different yeah. that it doesn't make sense anymore to compare them right but but that's how they're that's the whole selling point of the PlayStation 4 too is it's strictly a video game console and that's what the gamers want right but it's not though i, I understand uh, what i'm saying is my response to that it would be yeah. Okay, did you watch E3? Did mm-hmm. you watch Gamescom? Because I saw a boatload of games. And, um, you know, I kind of want to segue into this be- uh, just for time sa- uh, time's sake into what they actually showed so we could talk about some of this. And I want to start with Quantum Break because I'll tell you what. I think that that game is gorgeous, number yeah. one. Oh, definitely. And if yeah. you – so here's what they've done. So they've now brought in, which is, I guess, why they they haven't shown anything in a year. They brought in Sean Ashmore from X-Men to be Jack Mm -hmm. Joyce. Uh, And they have uh, Dominic Monaghan, you know, from Lord of the Rings, and uh, Aiden Gillen from Game of Thrones. So they're all playing characters in the game. They have Jack Joyce's face mo-capped to Sean Ashmore. And um, it damn near looks like... Yeah, the actual good. guy. It looks just like him. It looks just like him. Yeah. And so what they're able, what they're starting to do with this game, and the game's coming out all uh, now April fifth. So they still have, what are we at? Eight months? Am I? I'm just taking quick math here. If somebody. And Mike, we talked about the launch date, tying uh, tying or, or alongside Uncharted. Didn't I say? So, so yeah. So it's around that same time frame. Because there's no official date for Uncharted yet, but the 
the unofficial Amazon placeholder says March. Yep. So, uh, you know, I, I knew that's what they were going to do. Um, but, you know, we're talking about a game that now, if you watch that trailer, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Like where, you know, two years ago, coming out of 2013, could you have seen that game on an Xbox One with the early uh, dev kits or the early SDKs and all the hullabaloo about, you know, the, the system as it was? I don't think so. Look at it now. Look at look at the power behind that game and you tell me that, you know, this is a console made by Fisher Price. <laughs> Man, Mike is... Oh my- Mike is going Mike, in, isn't he? He's Mike like, went to Gaff today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was at Gaff during Gamescom. Well, no, it see, looks very good. It, it looks does. Good. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. I can do this. See, I can do this without taking the whole. Uh, uh, yeah. you notice I haven't. Notice I haven't said a word about PlayStation, because <laughs> I understand. I understand what what sits under that under the hood of that console too. I'm not yeah. suggesting I'm not saying this as if to say the PlayStation couldn't do this game. Of course it could. It could yeah. do every one of these games. My point has always been it could do every one of these games that Microsoft is talking about putting out now. But you know what? The uh, Xbox One could do every game that the PlayStation puts out. It there is no no, no more of this um, well I can you know we can only do this on X console because of X. You yeah, know? I mean, it's yeah. marketing. All that stuff's marketing. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I was looking for comparisons. I was I was doing this all day. The, the whole conference was just like a kick to me to why they're so different. You know, I see people trying to shoot more into comparisons and argue, but to me it's just – it's a no-brainer that they don't even belong in the same sentence together. And I was thinking about comparisons, and the same thing you brought up Uncharted. Tomb Raider and Uncharted. We've seen the gameplay for Uncharted mm-hmm. 4, and it looks incredible. Yep. And we've seen the gameplay for Tomb Raider, and it looks incredible. But, you know, Uncharted is set piece, big spectacle, move through, and go to the next level. Uncharted is spectacle, and then you go back and explore. That's the differences. They're so they're similar, but they're different. And they're so different that comparing them doesn't make sense. And that's the same thing with Microsoft and Sony now. I mean, it's just, I don't see the comparisons anymore. I don't see the arguing anymore. It just doesn't make sense. Because they're completely different companies. If you're going to go out and say, you know, I don't know why my Xbox doesn't do what the PlayStation does, or I don't know why the PlayStation doesn't do what the Xbox does, why would you want to buy two different consoles that do the same thing? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. I, what I would, what I would, what I would counter with is they kind of, you kind of have to, in the sense of they are competing for the same game space. But I, I think they are. I think Microsoft I think would. So, so, I think yeah. Microsoft would want to, you know, they want they want to pick up those PS4 gamers that, you know, the over the that might be on the fence of, of having a second console, and I think they want to pick up. I don't think they care more about who sells more. Like they can say all they want, we're in this to win it, and so 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 so. so. I think they're in it to keep the Xbox as a viable. Um, as a viable part of Microsoft, but absolutely, they want to pick up as many gamers as they can, and if it takes a couple from from the PlayStation, so be it. I agree yeah. with you there, but you know, Sony isn't competing to proliferate an operating system against Google and Apple. Sony isn't competing to sell phones, tablets that have the operating system on it. Sony isn't competing to proliferate an API in DirectX 12, and that's the yeah. differences. Okay, I, I, that's no, I, I get what you're saying there. I, I'm I'm looking at it more from the news aspect, from the um, from the from the gaming aspect, where they really are trying to, you know, sell a gaming system to gamers, and in that sense, they are competing very yeah. much with Microsoft, with uh, Sony on that, as well as they are with Nintendo. Yeah. The difference is, is that um, Phil Spencer isn't. Um, trying to kick them in the in the nuts while they're doing it he's very <laughs> he is a very um cordial and uh you know which speaks to which to me speaks to his um uh, value as a gamer yeah. so um, yeah but worry worry actually brings a great point though, and that's a great point worry about you know competing in that op that os space that technology space and you're right it's different they they are competing against apple and google 
you know, and right. and who and who's to say that Google or Apple wouldn't someday get into this space? Oh, exactly. Apple's tried. If, 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 yeah, if, and if you think about it from a dollar perspective, you know, hey. from the entertainment perspective, from uh, you hey, know, uh, just just real quick, um, Danny's got a uh, got a roll out um, before he goes. Uh, real quick, have you got uh, you know anything you want to? Anything you want to leave us with? And we'll get you back on another time, man. I know there's some circumstances. Yeah, you know, you know I, this is just horrible you, timing, you, family you, stuff. And yeah, man, you got to – I understand. I really appreciate you guys having me and, you know, and anytime you need somebody to fill in or whatever you need, I'm more than willing, willing. You guys are great. And, you know, uh, you, know you, me, Warry, we always play some Borderlands and, you know, <laughs> yes around it. You know, we we don't even get any, any game time, and we just sit and just BS. So yeah, you know, uh, it's a pleasure to speak with you guys, and I'm honored to to be on here. And you know, it, it, listen, I may have been a little underwhelmed with with the conference today, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't I was unhappy with it. Yeah, you know, I like I said, I don't know, maybe I just expected a little bit more the way it was the hype and everything else. Yeah, and then you know what? Maybe it was just me. Maybe it was you know. My my everyday issues, you know, going on with my family or something that kind of put my perception off a little bit. It could be me. Uh, you oh, know, I don't know. I mean, you you want what you want. I mean, if, if if you if you're not if you weren't happy, you weren't happy. That that's fine. Now that doesn't mean I'm not going to go out and buy Quantum Break scale. Break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. yeah. Something else we got to talk about a little later is you know Xbox gamers buying games. We'll cover that you know before the end of the podcast. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. But uh, Southbound, you know, hey man. We we appreciate you coming on for the time you could come on. We definitely want to get you back in here and finish this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, I'm, I feel bad for cutting out, but, you know, duty calls. No, no, man. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. You take care of business. Yes, sir. You guys have a good one. You take too. Care. All right. Thank you, man. So, all right. So, um, Enrique, I'm sorry. I did not mean to cut you off on that. He just – he had to kind of abruptly go, and uh, we wish him – No, no We wish him all the, all the best with uh, – what's happening with him right now. So, um, yeah, we definitely got to get him back on again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and pick up uh, where you were on that. Uh, let's see. What was I talking about? You were talking Google about Apple. Google and Apple, the OS. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're in a different, they're in a different landscape. I think like, like where said. And so, you know, if they don't do this, uh, Google or Apple is going to come in and, and step in and start doing this. And, and, and I, you know, it's funny because, when I thought back to 2013, the DRM, the TV stuff, the DVR stuff, and, and, and the one thing that always stuck out to me, if Microsoft doesn't do it, it's someone else is going to do it. It's just the natural progression of things, you know? And and one thing that people don't realize, too, is that there's a there's a demographic of gamers that are young. You know, Mike, how old are your kids? Uh, 10, nine. 5, and 1. So the way they're experiencing entertainment and gaming – it's completely different than how we than what we grew up with just playing Atari. Right. Everything is everything has converged into like one device now. Everything is mm-hmm. together now. And and their expectation moving forward, your kids, their expectation of a platform is that the platform needs to do A, B, and C. And if it doesn't do A, B, and C, they're not going to look at it. You know, it's funny you say that. Um, my my kids have Kindles. My uh, mm-hmm. middle child has one of those Kindle Fires. Uh, the kids, the kids one, um, but you know what my son was doing today tonight? He What's was that? playing. Uh, uh, he was playing on the Xbox 360, which is now up in our in our bedroom, or not in our mm-hmm. bedroom, in our main room, which is now our with all this backward compatibility, it's become our Netflix machine upstairs. Um, he opened up Microsoft's game room and was playing Time Pilot. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, in Television's Night Stalker. I mean, th- these are the games that he is now picked up on you know he was this kid uh, he's 10 now but even at like nine he was playing world of tanks he was down here playing forza horizon but (laughs) but you know looking at him now he that's what he's and and he's you know he's playing that he played contra i don't know how he found contra um but i'm talking about game room contra like like xbla contra and so he's he's sort of he's sort of getting into this old retro stuff making his old dad feel good (laughs) <laughs> um, but you know, and he can play on his phone or his tablet when he leaves the house, right? Well, when he, when he yeah, he can actually. But what he could, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, he absolutely. And when they, when, when we go to the beach next week, I guarantee he's going to have his Kindle with him. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so that goes back to you know connectivity. 
you know, getting exactly. on the go. I mean, so that's 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 the field I think that like like Warren said, that's what Microsoft's in because they're competing against Google and Apple who are doing those things. They're offering you know entertainment on the go, who are offering uh, connectivity on the go, um, and and they're they're very much in that space. So um, that's why um, you know they're 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 kind of like like Warren said, going in a different direction uh, than Sony is. Yeah, and you know what? I, I don't get to talk about this much because when you bring it up, people think that you're, you know, they get defensive and they think that it's the, instead of just having a rational discussion about yeah. it, you're attacking them. But listen, if you don't think Sony would want, you know, th- their own OS or their own API or a place to put their games other than the PlayStation, you're crazy. Of course they do. That's the whole deal with the Samsung TVs. And, you know, I could even see in the future some games going to PC also, even first-party Sony games. But it, it would make sense for them to do that. They would make more money. Exactly. That's yeah. that, That's the issue. That, and people, you know, that that's, that's a sore spot for people, you know, either really, really young traditional console gamers or really, really old people who just don't like that idea. But, you know, there's a reason why all of these companies are doing that, including Sony. So... It just is what it is, and you know Microsoft is just doing it more because they have a bigger stake in both sides, console and PC, as opposed to just console. Well, and the other thing about that is it's not just that they have a bigger stake. They have the means to do it. They own the operating system. They well, have the ability to, to mesh all this together, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Yeah. They They have the ability to do it, and I think Sony would love to have that ability. Um, you know, the, uh, Microsoft has the infrastructure to handle all this. Yeah. You know, um, they would love. To, you know, they're trying to do what Apple does with the unification of all their devices, right? Because it works for Apple. Yep. Sony has Sony's trying to do it, and they can do it with the Vita, with the remote play and stuff like that. They have the a version now. of it, PlayStation Now. Everybody's trying to get into that space. Where Microsoft has the advantage, if you're looking at it from an objective point of view, they have the one thing that neither of the other two have, and that is Windows. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Sony, Sony's trying to do it and not be anything other than a PlayStation device doing it. Microsoft's doing it and saying, do it anywhere as long as you're using our API and OS. Mm-hmm. Right. And hey, developers, you can make a whole lot more money selling to both. Yep. So I mean, you know, let's skip down to that real quick. Instead, of, I was going to go in order of games shown, but let's skip down to that since we're talking about it. You know, Tr- Chris Charler comes out on stage, and um, you know, Chris is a great guy. Uh, I've I've talked to him a few times. Uh, you know, he has a very big passion for that idea at Xbox program, and um, if you see what's gone on with the indie program in the last, let's just say, year, it's insane. The amount of games coming to Xbox One first, the amount of games now, every game he talked about on stage today was coming to Xbox One and Windows 10, and most of them, if not all of them, are going to have some form of cross-buy and cross-play. And he started right off by having uh, Koji uh, Agarishi come out, uh, Agarashi come out, and um, talk about Bloodstain, which is a Kickstarter game that they, uh, that's you know kind of like you know he was the big designer of Castlevania, another one that Konami he came out with a whip. Yep, came out with the whip and the and the hat. <laughs> but he was another one. He's I was another like confused by that. I was like, what is he so doing? Was yeah, he's another he casualty. <laughs> but he's another he's another casualty of Konami going mobile yeah. and and pachinko machine, yeah. and so he's working on a a. Metroidvania type game, and he comes out and he says, "Hey, guess what? Cross play, cross play between Windows 10 and Xbox One. It's probably coming out on Xbox One first, I think he said. And he's sitting there praising Microsoft for all of that work that they're doing on on the OS. So, you know, you've got um, my my, you know, my beloved Worms, Windows 10 and Xbox One, City Skylines." Um, which was kind of a surprise. Uh, you know, it's been a fairly popular PC game, and now it's coming out for Xbox One and Windows 10. Um, you know, uh, and I don't know if you guys, did you guys get a chance to see enough of the conference to see Thimbleweed Park? Yeah. 
So Ron Gilbert of Secret of Monkey Island fame and Man- and uh, Manic Mansion fame is putting together this Thimbleweed Park, which, as an old guy, um, it's right up my alley. It's a point-and-click adventure with that old scum interface where you you got the mouse and you click on you, you click where you want to click and you cl- or you click on the command you want. Look here and you click, and it and it kind of it's just total point and click. Um, you know, very much Windows 10 and Xbox One. Uh, and then they announced uh, Ark Survival Evolved, which has been a highly talked about game uh, recently. It's out on early access on Steam, but it's going to head to the game preview program for Xbox One and, and Windows 10. So, I mean, these are um, these are this is what they're shooting for, and it and it plays right into what what Brian's saying. You know, if, if you pay attention to what you said there, everything you said was Xbox One, Windows 10, Xbox One, Windows 10, crossplay, Xbox One, Windows 10, and that's the disconnect between Microsoft and Sony. People hear that and either love that idea of a walled-in garden. All your stuff everywhere. Microsoft's doing that because the Xbox is a Windows 10 device now. And then the traditional console people hear that and they say, well, those games don't count because they're on PC. People don't like that. People want a traditional console or they want what Microsoft's doing. And that's the disconnect that's going on. Well, it's not even that they don't, they don't make it count. Here's the, here's the argument I've heard. Every game that goes on PC – Along with window with uh, Xbox One, is just another reason not to own an Xbox One because there's you know they they don't have the exclusives that make you want to to just own that console, right. and that's the that's yeah. that disconnect right there. My I talked about this last week with Fable Legends. My perfect scenario is to play it on the Xbox One while I'm home because I'm not sitting here in front of my office PC to play it. But when I'm, you know, and, and I used my office as a uh, as the example, but, you know, I'm going on vacation next week. I'm going to be at the beach. I'm going to have my Surface tablet with me. If Fable Legends was out, I could I could sit at the beach, pick, some, pick up some Wi-Fi, and play. And have all of my stats and all of the same stuff. I can't. I don't have to take my Xbox with me on the road because I have all that stuff on my Windows 10 box. Right. And and yeah. there are and there are people that like that idea. I love that there, idea. But there are still a lot of people who hear that. Brilliant. Right. I do. I do as well. And the, but yeah. for me, it highlights, like I said, the differences. They're so different yeah. that trying to compare them doesn't make sense for me personally. But there are people that hear that and they say, "Well, that's not a console." I want a box that I can only put this disc in and I feel like I'm part of a community that only gets this and nobody else can have it. That's the disconnect. And I think older people get the differences. I think that there's a lot of younger people that don't, but I think there's a handful of older people that just are caught up in the whatever's going on. But for me personally, after this show, I mean, I don't even, it doesn't even register to me anymore it didn't before, but even even more so now to say like to compare and say, you know, well, how come Microsoft isn't doing what Sony's doing, or how come Sony isn't doing what Microsoft is doing? There's such different companies, and they're going in so many different directions that it just doesn't make any sense. You either like what each does, or you only like what one does. Mm-hmm. And I think you can like what they're both doing. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do too. That's why I'm both. <laughs> but, you know, I, I if you again, if you step back, and this was the thing that that I that did kind of balance out my you know, my my thoughts of, you know, I didn't think it was as um, you know, as uneventful. I I said good, but not wow. But part of it was I stepped back and I said, look at everything they're announcing. Look at everything in totality that they're doing. And that is something that is the direction of Phil Spencer. And you have to acknowledge that it's the right way to go. He's, he's got this plan, and it's a fantastic plan. And, and you know you have to like where microsoft is headed even if you don't like each and every one of the games that they're bringing out which it, you know maybe you don't and and there's nothing wrong with that you have to at least see what 
direction they're going in and understand that it is a good thing. Yeah, no, I, you know, Mike, I agree. And, and, and a lot of people don't, and I've said this before in the past, and I've had a lot of people, you know, um, disagree with me on this, but they are pushing the industry forward in terms of how we experience and interact with our content. And that's not a bad thing. You just gave an example. You can go out on the beach, right, and play Fable Legends on your Surface Pro. Could you see Mike out there in his in his in his shorts running up and down on the beach, <laughs> screaming, in screaming, his, I'm his, level 46! In his Speedo. I just yeah. had an achievement! <laughs> yes. I'm playing Fable. I'm playing yeah. play Fable. <laughs> I can see him standing. I can see him standing in the water, holding the surface tablet above the water, so it doesn't get wet. And then his other yeah. arm holding the Pip Boy above the water, <laughs> so it doesn't get wet. Well, no, I would wrap that stuff in plastic. Are you yeah, kidding? Exactly. I would have the. I would have they. I would have the surface in a plastic baggie. Yeah. I could do this. Yeah, I'd be out on a float, like one of those floats that you have in the pool with the big arms. And I could just have a stand and have the surface on top. As long as nobody comes and knocks me over, I'm good. You're good. So, that is too. <laughs> but this is, you know. But, but this that's is, where this is going, though. I mean, this is where the industry is going. And it's amazing how much resistance there is to this. You know, and, and it's happening. I mean, we, we've seen this with other devices. This isn't, you know, consoles aren't immune to change. You know, and um, uh, I think this goes, this goes back to your point, Mike, that you can experience – you know, your content anywhere you go. I mean, I would love that. I would love to be able to take my Note 4 and if I wanted to at a lunch break, hop on Halo 5, you know, and play and do that and earn my achievements, you know, play a quick multiplayer game, you know, and do that. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't want to do that? I mean, if you love gaming, if you're into gaming, why wouldn't you want that? Well, I mean, there are people who are just traditionalists and they want console gaming to be console gaming. So those people aren't going to take to it. But, you know, like I said, I... Th- I agree with what you're saying where everything is going towards that. And I think Sony knows that as well. And that's what the whole Samsung TV deal was. Now they're not going to have a handheld in the future to do that streaming with, because I don't think they're going to make another handheld. But, yeah. you know, I do think, you know, it's not a stretch to say some first party Sony games in the future, not the near future, but in the future will be on PlayStation products and on PC. And that's just, the, that's just the way of things. Well, they it can, makes sense for them to do that. They make more money, yeah. They can maybe have a PlayStation app on, you know, the, the Ericsson phones if they're still making them at that time. Yeah. On on uh, you know on on a tablet, they can have a PlayStation app. But that's going to happen. And the idea, look, people who play console games are always going to play console games. I've been a console gamer since before consoles when we were using the Amiga and the Commodore, and they led into the console. <laughs> Atari. And the, the Atari. Sorry, Atari yeah. Sorry, I had to throw that in. Yeah. Yeah. ColecoVision. So. I never, I never went to PC. I was always a console gamer, even though I know games on PC technically Mike are better. Candy. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like people are just going to say, well, I'm not going to be a console gamer. I'm just going to buy a PC because it just doesn't happen. It's the same thing when people complain about first-party games. You know, they're on the console, they're on the PC, they don't count. But we all yeah. buy our third-party games on consoles, even though they mm-hmm. go to PC too. But we don't care about that. We just buy them on the console. But it's, I know a lot of PC gamers that hate consoles and vice versa. I did them. I did it both. You know, yeah. I, I, yeah. I tried it. I just wasn't. I, I've been a I've been a console gamer, and that's just. I just enjoy that more. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think I, I acknowledge I, PC is superior. I don't even think it's that. I think it's just it's. I find console gaming to be more, uh, not casual, but personal. Per, yeah, yeah, I could sit on my couch, and, and uh, I get it. I get it. Everybody can build an HTPC that they can hook to their to their yeah. to system and all that stuff. But you still have to have a mouse and keyboard, and you still have to. I don't. I'm just not. I I want to. I want to sit down. I want to grab my controller. If and the your console, if the my pit boy, <laughs> if the console allows me to, I want to tell it what to do, and then I want to. I just want to sit back put my feet up and play the games right and that's yeah. console gaming yeah so and you know we're talking about the industry and where it's headed and 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 what microsoft is doing to innovate that um you know let's go to crackdown now I, i'm gonna i'm gonna admit for me that they didn't show enough they this they 
showed very little of the game. But mm-hmm. what they did show was really impressive as far as what they're trying to do. So wait, was that Cloud that they showed? That was Cloud. So this is interesting. Wait, cloud's real? Yeah. Yeah, the Cloud's real. Sorry to break everybody's bubble, but you know, after X amount of time, they finally yeah. had something to show. Um, you know, Phil said, uh, you know, we have to wait. We're going to show this to you when we're ready. We have to yeah. build it up. We have to make sure it's right, and then you'll see it. And, well, this is it. So Crackdown's coming out in summertime. At least that's the placeholder date that they put in was summer 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Jones, actually, I don't know if he – I don't know if he renamed – his studio or not, you know, it was Cloud Gin, and I don't know if maybe Cloud Gin is maybe the, the technology. The actual studio name that's that's developing this is Reagent Games. Get it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, and so they're they're banking heavily with this game on Microsoft's cloud. They said specifically to do all this hundred percent destructible environment that they're going to do with four player co op and all that. The cloud is going to the cloud is actually going to power 20% of all the physics and all the destruction computation. I mean, wow. that's that's huge to take that much pressure off of the CPU on your console. I mean, imagine what they can do with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm a big Crackdown fan, so, I mean, the game itself I'm going to buy. As far as the cloud stuff, it looked impressive, but... You know, I'm still waiting. I want to see it in action. It's one of those things that, you know, like you said, they didn't show enough. You, you saw some people playing it, sitting down from like third from a third person perspective, like an old, over the shoulder person sitting at the desk playing Crackdown. And the stuff that they showed in the beginning, that was all CG. That wasn't in game. That that those images in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You uh, think? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, because they showed gameplay. When you saw the gameplay part of it, you know, when the people were sitting at the desk. And you could see the monitor and them playing the game. It didn't look like that. So, you know, I, that, that's where I'm getting that from. And because okay. it, just, it just didn't look like that. It looked great, but it didn't look like those those images. When the guy's standing on the roof looking out on the city, I don't think that was real time. Do you? I, I'd like to think it was. Now, I, I could be wrong. I to, yeah. You know, I could be wrong, but I'd like to think that it was. It didn't look – I don't know. It didn't have a CGI look to it. I mean, I, yeah. I know what CGI looks like. It looked like an in-engine thing. Now, you know, I've looked around, and I've tried to – you know, Crackdown does have a, a website now, its own website, crackdown.com. Yeah. And I looked, and I was trying to determine whether or not that was in-engine or not. I can't find any information on it. I don't know. I it, it didn't if seem. If you go as. back and watch, if you go back and watch the uh, the uh, the show, when they're showing that, they, you know, they go behind the scenes into the studio, and you see them sitting at a desk actually playing the game, and you can see the game, and it, it doesn't look like that. I mean, it looks oh, wow. great, but it doesn't look like that beginning shot. Yeah, that's the only reason huh. I'm saying that, and I could be wrong too, but that's the only reason why I, I took it that way. Uh, and that's fair. That's mm-hmm. fair. Um, I'm going to uh, try to find some information on that. I mm-hmm. will. We'll check with uh, with those guys and see if if that's true or not. Um, now, the other again, thing is that uh, Microsoft showed off um, the cloud demo. I think it was at was yeah. it a build conference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the build, was the it? building destru- destructible uh, environment. That yeah, one yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. Well, the other part that made it kind of seem not CGI was the character model. Like the character model looked like I think it, I think the character model looked very similar to Quantum Breaks. Yeah. Um, I saw orbs. There were <laughs> orbs. There were orbs. There were so, orbs. You know, it could have been. It very well could have been. I, I would like to think yeah. that they would show something in engine, but I, who knows? You know, CGI seems to be the the way of the world these days. Yeah. Um, so you, it could very well – you're right. It could very well be. It'll be fun to find out. Yeah. I would get that, – that game is mine regardless. If it is oh, anything – it is anything like Crackdown 1, I don't care if it's in Tandy 16 color. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I the loved Tandy. Crackdown, and I cannot – I did this game. This game is a rock. There's yeah. nothing about it. Yeah. So um, let's – Talk about Scalebound. Anybody interested in Scalebound? Yes. yes. 
So um, the the Microsoft hater himself was out on stage to demo that game. I thought he was going to walk off stage. I thought he was going to block everybody in the uh, in the arena. He hates Microsoft, or he just doesn't like. He's I, we service. we talked about this on Sunday. It's just his shtick. Yeah, it's just his thing. He uh, you know, but uh, he came out and he demoed the game, and um, so I, I I've heard that people were hoping for like a Dragon's Dogma kind of thing, mm-hmm. but I liked what I kind of I liked what I saw. Yeah. And I kind of liked the character. I thought the funniest thing about that whole uh, that whole video was, you know, the fact that, of course, the kid can, you know, talk to the dragon, a la, you know, Han Solo and Chewbacca. Yeah. And he looks at he looks up at the dragon and says, hey, "Use your words." And I just I cracked up laughing. I yeah. Hey, do you remember a game called uh, Draken on the PC and PlayStation Two? The Draken. dragon game called Draken. I, I vaguely, vaguely, yeah. vaguely remember it. Yeah, I, I remember that game because you were able to ride your dragon, get off, and then do some things, and that's why I was interested in Scalebound, if that's what the game was when we heard about it prior to the show. But when he came out and he said you can explore on and off the dragon, I was sold. And then, you know, the gameplay's pre-alpha. That's really early. Are, are, we, still... talking, are we talking Draken, the, um, the Infograms game? Yeah. Oh God, that goes back a long way. Now I'm yeah. starting to remember. That goes actually, um, that goes back to SNES and DOS. It was. Oh, it was probably a different game than we're thinking of. Yeah, I'm thinking of the game. Um, is it is it Dragon is it Dragon or Dragon Guard? No, it's called uh, yeah. Draken. D R A K K A G N. There may have been a, a port Enix. of it, but PlayStation Two, no. I think it was on the PlayStation 2, but it was originally on PC. Yeah, it was it was DOS and SNES. I just pulled up a I just pulled it up, and uh, it was actually it's funny. Mind. So according to this, that game was initially developed for the Amiga and Atari ST. Jeez. So. Oh come on, old. Yeah, we really are. But uh, I. L- I want another Panzer Dragon. That's that. Yeah, that could have seen that there. See that. Talking about like... it. Talking about a drop the mic moment. Can you imagine that? I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm kind of off the on the rails uh, shooter. <laughs> well, I think people were so disappointed with Crimson Dragon that oh, yeah. somebody oh, would have, terrible. which you know, I for what it was for a twenty dollar game, I don't I I didn't understand the hate, yeah. but I understand I like you know what people people would want a better uh, and a real Panzer Dragoon, and I that could have been a big moment. But I mean, uh, scale bound pre alpha that looked really good. Oh, I incredible. thought it looked great. I thought uh, I I really I really liked what they were doing with the uh, with mm-hmm. the dragon. I mean, I think and I, the co-op. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Was awesome. Four yeah. player co-op. Mm-hmm. You know what's interesting too? A lot of the games they pushed for a lot of co-op, and even though they're going to have multiplayer. But I noticed there was a big push. Most of the games they announced, you know, they said and co-op and co-op and co-op. And mm-hmm. I like that. I like the idea of you know. Putting co-op just as important as you know competitive multiplayer. I agree because that's what I play. I am a co-op guy. I don't yeah. jump on. You know, it's why I enjoyed stuff like Borderlands and yeah. running through the Master Chief Collection co-op. Uh, that's why I'm I, I'm really excited for games like Rainbow Six Siege because I'm not going to play those competitively. I'm gonna I'm gonna find yeah. somebody and I'm gonna run through that game with them, not against them. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, but you have to have both. They both equally should be just as important in a game. Yeah. Yes, because not everybody wants to do it that way. Yeah. You know, I. So I'm I'm happy for as much co-op. I'm happy for it. Uh, so Scalebound is going to be that's so. Remember how I was saying Crackdown would be the holiday 2016 title. Yeah. So it's not. It's going to be Scalebound. Yeah. So. Um. I just I just want Crackdown to come out as soon as possible. Yeah, I want it to come out in December, but it's not. No, not even close. Orbs. <laughs> it's all about the orbs. Oh, anyway, I thought you said all about the worms, because worms, I'm all about the worms. I can guarantee you when Crackdown <laughs> does come out, Crackdown 1 and 2 will be backwards compatible and included with the game. Oh, wow, that would be awesome. I, yeah. ha- I still have mine, so it would be very easy for me to... 
pull yeah, it out. I, I think they're going to do that with a lot of titles if developers allow them. Well, it's funny you mention that because we saw that we saw that today. So we saw Just Cause Three. So they showed some gameplay on Just Cause Three, and right at the end of that trailer, they're giving you Just Cause Two if you buy Just Cause Three, and that's thanks to backward compatibility. You know, we already know about the. Uh, the Gears Collection, which was the pre, kind of the That's pre-announcement, awesome. um, which now I understand why they made that as a pre-announcement. I guess being that they're in Germany and and mm-hmm. it's difficult, it's hard to talk about Gears like like Phil Spencer really glossed over Gears once or twice. Um, so, you know, you're getting when you pre-order or you buy Gears Ultimate Edition, you are getting Gears One, Two, Three, and Judgment for free yep. through backward compatibility. We know Rainbow Six, which they showed some more gameplay on today, yeah. you're getting uh, Vegas 1 and Vegas 2, mm-hmm. which were, I mean, those were my most favorite of the Rainbow Six games. I know they weren't the quote-end-quote traditional Rainbow Six games, but those were my favorites. And so you're getting that. Um, I'm trying to think, were there any other ones that, that I missed that I think they're going to do it with as many as they possibly can, obviously. I mean, yeah. but uh, I think you pretty much covered most that I know of. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. trying to think. That's just tremendous they're... value that they're offering. Yeah. So speaking of the I mean, backward compatibility, mm. we'll skip to that. Um, you know, Mike Ibarra, after he spent his, you know, 45 minutes on the DVR, um, <laughs> he went right to backward compatibility. So backward compatibility is coming November. And they're still talking about having over 100 games. Now, here is what I thought was interesting and what I thought bared a little bit of discussion, even if it's just looking at it from um, from afar. So this time, he actually said, we have these partners who are on board. He listed Capcom. He listed Ubisoft. He listed EA. He listed, you know, all these... All these companies that were on board with backward compatibility. Guess what company is not on that list? Activision. Activision. Well, you know why that is. I know exactly why that is, and I was having sort of a um, yeah yeah I was having a discussion. That's surprising. Yeah, I was having a discussion on Twitter just a little while ago with a couple of people um, that uh, you know, my my theory on it is that you are just not going to get. Call of Duty backwards compatible now that Sony yeah. has the marketing deal for the game mm-hmm. because you're not going to give there's it would be a cold day in hell before they gave Microsoft any ability or le- or leverage to um, to sell Call of Duty. I mean, why would they? And I mean, I mean, they could they could even be thinking of doing like another HD remake of their past best Call of Duty games and charge thirty or forty dollars for it and, and still make millions of dollars. So yeah, I, and yeah. that was that was the argument supplied to me, and I and I don't discount that. I could see that, um, but I also think that if Microsoft still had the deal, that oh yeah, I mean, Activision I, would offer Black Ops One and Two to sweeten the deal. Well, that's but, part of it. That's part of it. Yeah, because and it would take away that that impact of having the thirty days extra maps. Yes. On, uh, Call and, of Duty. And while ultimately, um, would it really though, do you think it really would? Because you're you're getting old. You're getting old games to play. You're not getting new content in the map packs. Yes, because you have a lot of players that are still playing Call of Duty Black Ops One and Two. So now, do you want to go get the PlayStation Four version and get the early map packs, or do you want to get the um, you want to buy yourself? If you haven't bought a console yet, you want to buy an Xbox One and bring forward the games you're already playing. I guess so. I think I, I think that would be. I mean, it's it's a, it's the selling point for all these other games. It would be a big selling point for here. And while I understand that that ultimately it is Activision's decision to do it or not do it, yeah. you can't tell me that that Sony is not putting a little pressure on them to not do that. Well, I could tell you that, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, do you think that's happening? I think, you know, I'm not one of these conspiracy guys where everything's the media or everything's like, you know, a guy sitting behind a desk pulling a lever. 
you know, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. It's this great, powerful Oz thing. But I do think this particular deal, I think that the idea of getting that content first is kind of still a big deal. I don't know if it's, if it's as big a deal as possible, but it seems, like, it seems like it might be as big a deal, even when people are saying that it isn't, because if it wasn't, then this idea of getting the backwards compatible Call of Duty wouldn't be a big deal either, and it is. You see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. if it's a big deal, you know, not getting these backwards compatible Call of Duty games because of the deal, then the deal is a big deal. The the content early may do something. And I, I, de- I definitely don't think that, you know, they wanted those games to come out and Microsoft to say, hey, you know, we don't have the map packs, but you're going to get three Call of Duty games plus the new game if you buy it here. That makes sense to me. I, I think it also has to do with, you know, we talked about Call of Duty being the focus being multiplayer. Yeah. And you got to remember something. Those servers go down at a certain point. And so, you know, is it is it cost effective internally, you know, for Activision to keep those servers going because of backwards compatibility? Yeah, it could be. It could be a lot of things. It could be what Mike's saying. It could be the deal. They don't want to give him the advantage. It could be that. It could be the, the whole idea of the server issue. Like, why, why pay attention to that when they could just pay attention to the new game, make sure that's running mm-hmm. smoothly. It could mm-hmm. be a lot of different things. I don't think it's any one thing, but I do think that you know the, the points you're you're bringing up are valid. Well, remember yeah. though that the you know, Xbox, Xbox Live, Live in the last gen was um, uh, peer-to-peer. Peer. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. You know, there are no servers to deal with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, you're, I mean, if I had a guess, it would probably be a combination of the, uh, the exclusivity deal and the fact that probably Activision is going to put together a Call of Duty compendium for $40 in 1080p, 60 frames a second, and make millions of dollars off of it. We are talking about Call of Duty once a week now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I almost so, so you said, there. So, Mike, you said, yeah, that's funny. So, um, you're saying EA was on that list for companies that are going to do backwards. I believe so. Right? Um, if I'm incorrect, because, please leave me a comment uh, down below. I may yeah, be incorrect, but I'm pretty is, sure it was. My other thought is, you know, EA and Activision are the two biggest publishers right now. And what if Activision is planning something like an EA Access? Um, they could, they, they could be, I think that would, I, and uh, you know, I would buy into that to be quite honest because there are other things I mean, other than yeah. call of duty that I'd want, you know, um, there's other franchises Activision has, yeah. I'd, I'd go for, but I, I've been, I've been waiting for, for uh, Ubisoft to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know though. I mean, I, I don't know if I want every third party developer having a subscription service. That would get a little bit too much, don't you think? No, yeah, I, I, see, yeah. an Activision, then yeah. No, I the would, thing- I would be for it, and I'll tell you why. How many subscriptions can you possibly have, though? Well, would I pay? Would I pay thirty dollars a year for per subscription, or wait, you know, and wait for these games to come out, or would I keep spending sixty dollars a game, sixty dollars a game, sixty dollars a game for somebody like me? That is very, um, you know, financially uh, strapped. Um, that's a hell of a deal to pay. Let's say, let's say it's all four of them. It's EA, it's Activision, Ubisoft, and um, well, no, he can't use like. Uh, well, I use Capcom or somebody. Or just use the big three. The big three is EA, Ubisoft, and Activision. That would be ninety bucks a year versus. I mean, that's that's a game and a half to get a vault full of games so I would have to wait six months or so to play them okay you know that uh, it, uh, like tonight um, the rumor has it and I haven't seen anything official yet Dragon Age Inquisition hit the uh, vault I mean I missed buying that game because it was another $60 game I couldn't afford yeah. but now I can go and play it and all it cost me is the 30 bucks a year that I that I've got that that does have value for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I just don't know how many, you know, how many companies now. How many is too many? You know. Yeah, and then on top EA, of that, you Ubisoft, you, Activision. How many companies are going to yeah. do a subscription-based service like that? And when is too much? You know, not good. 
on top of you know having to pay two to access that content through like an Xbox Live or right. PlayStation Plus, yeah. Well, we're also talking about um, optional things here. I mean, we're not. Yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah. I would yeah, I would yeah, say to, yeah. if it was something where where companies just stopped selling games outright and did just the service right, right. like you know, a PlayStation Now kind of thing, then I would not be for that. But as long as you have the choice between opting in or opting out, um, I think it's, I think as many companies that want to do it, you know, it's not for everybody. And you can pick and choose who you want to subscribe to. But I can see the value in it as a as somebody who doesn't really care if I get the game day one. Yeah. I mean, I just assume that we, like, Obviously, you don't have to pay for any of the stuff. <laughs> I think people hear about it and they get bent out of shape about it, but nobody's forcing you to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, I don't know. I um, we kind of we've kind of moved a little away <laughs> from. I don't know how we got to subscriptions from backward compatibility, but you know. Uh, so that's what uh, we do with this podcast. We just cover all topics. <laughs> we do, we do, and that's why they're four hours apiece. <laughs> um, so getting Sorry. back to the Gamescom stuff, though, so the backward compatibility is coming in November, and they're still they're still talking about over a hundred games. Um, I, I, I'm dying to see. I mean, we're now in August. We're talking about three months. I'm dying to see what's next on that list. Um, speaking of November, and we'll we'll kind of jump off to another non-specifically game-related thing. The new UI that that we that we sort of touched on in the first part Ooh, of the podcast. We. So here's the cool part. So they're talking about November for the UI. So Mike Yabara is saying that he is targeting getting it to all of us in the preview program in September. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I can't wait for September. It makes sense a couple months ahead of time. Yeah, give him two months. Yeah, as you can. Yeah, and then launch it. Yeah. I'll I'll bug test it. I yeah. have no problem with that. Um, it looks great. That that UI looks great. And even beyond that, is if it's as fast as they say it is, very happy. Yeah, well, that's one of the things they're they're trying to focus on, um, increasing the the speed. If they can yeah. get it, they need to. They do. They do. I, I, I can definitely see the complaints. You know, it's, it doesn't bother yeah. me as much as it bothers other people, but I can absolutely sympathize yeah. with people who are just – who just say that it's too slow, it's too cumbersome. I I can see it, and I can understand mm-hmm. that frustration. So if yeah. this thing is as fast as they say it is, um, then, then we're in for a real treat. Did you guys see uh, Major Nelson tweeted uh, the UI today? Yeah. He did. How did you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. With Forza, right? Forza. Forza. Yeah, Forza. Yeah. Yep. yep. And we'll have that picture. Um, if it's not up on Twitter, I'm I'm working on getting it to put. You know, while we're while we're talking here. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is good good stuff. Um, uh, and you know, hey, um, we we didn't get a chance to talk about this with the Windows 10 and Xbox One, uh, stuff because we kind of were talking about the the indie games, but. Um, Killer Instinct was one of those games that's going Xbox One and Windows 10. So with cross buy and cross play, mm-hmm. and today they announced season three is coming in March. So now we're getting a whole new set of characters. And <laughs> today, Rash from Battletoads is a playable character. <laughs> so. I'm, not a big, I'm not a big fighting game guy, so I'm not, not either. A big impact on me. I'm not either, but yeah, I'm but not either. I it's funny. Cool, Some of the moves it's doing. <laughs> they won't make a Battletoads game. Yeah. But damn, they'll put Battletoads in everything. <laughs> yeah, right. It's gonna be Battletoads cereal pretty soon. So I, I, cereal. <laughs> I think there was in the '80s. There was. That's why I brought it up. Oh, that's oh, funny. Was it really? Yeah. Like, did they make a warp cereal? A who? A, a what? A warp cereal. No, warm cereal. Oh, warm cereal. Oh, worms. Oh, worm cereal. Thank you, a worm cereal. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys. You guys. Um, so, uh, oh, something else that was kind of um, out of the blue. So, uh, Mojang, the guy from Mojang comes out. Yeah. yeah. And says, you know, thank you for 
Um, buying everything Minecraft. Right. Thank you for buying everything Minecraft. And thank you for making us rich. Yeah. Oh, and thank you, Microsoft, for also making us rich. Yeah. So I I think many people were expecting to see um, Minecraft 2, right? And instead, the they finally are bringing out the game Cobalt, which I have no idea what this game is, except it looks like a two-dimensional, you know, TD platformer. Yeah. It, it looked like Fantasy Zone. Remember? From yes, it did look like color. Fantasy Zone. Yeah, except without the uh, color. It, it was strange. I didn't know what it was. But I listen, my, Minecraft 2, I don't think there's ever going to be a Minecraft 2. No. Minecraft's no. just going to reiterate on itself, add things to it. It's just always going to be Minecraft. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but my, you know, what I was uh, kind of getting at was, you know, they, they this was a kind of a, a nice change of pace new announcement. Because I think a lot of people thought, that when Microsoft bought Mojang, they bought it for, you know, because everybody said we bought it for the Minecraft IP, and they, they made no bones about it. Mm-hmm. I thought, I think a lot of people thought that, that that other IP they were working on, which was Cobalt, was kind of dead and buried. So, you know, this is another, this seems to be another example of Spencer allowing the their their internal studios to kind of do their thing and make their make their own choices as to what they want to want to make um, you know not to get off on a slight um, deviation from the gamescom stuff but there was an a uh, there was an interview that uh, polygon did with uh, Rod Ferguson from the coalition and uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry it wasn't Rod Ferguson it, or it might have been it was somebody from the coalition and they were talking about how they made the move from Black Tusk and that that kind of tech demo code name Shang Heist or whatever you know people want to put the name on it to making Gears of War. And the guy said, you know, Phil Spencer came to us and said, you guys can continue what you're doing, or I got Gears of War, and everybody said, yeah, let's make Gears of War. So. This kind of seems like the same, the same kind of thing where you know, okay, they're they're putting all their eggs into Minecraft as far as what they bought, but now they're letting that that studio go and complete a game that everybody thought was dead and buried. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard for me with Mojang because I'm not a big, I don't like Minecraft at all. It's just not my cup of tea. It's a kids' game. It's what my yeah. kids play. So, you know, the the new game they showed, it, it just didn't interest me. And it just didn't interest me at all. I'm not saying that, you know, obviously Minecraft's a phenomenon. Um, you know, they purchased it, and I think they probably already made their money back tenfold between, mm-hmm. you know, the lunch boxes and the toys and the TV show coming soon and the, and the movie. movie and the ride at, at Universal Studios that they're building. It's it's insane. But uh, it just never really uh, piqued my interest. Hmm. But does Cobalt? Cobalt, I just didn't understand what it was. It looked like a a, a two D, you know, left to right shooter type game that had elements of platforming in it. That's kind of how it looked to me as well. Um, and I guess what, but I guess where my where I was going with this was. Um, just allowing them to make the game, yeah. I guess. Uh, they gave well, them free reign to do whatever they wanted. Yeah, yeah. allowing them yeah. to to make it, and that's kind of you know, um, if you go to their website, and it's coming out this October, so it's been in it's been in development a long time, um, and it's actually coming out according to their website, Xbox One, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and Steam, and Windows Ten in October. Uh, there's a is an old alpha that's out on PC and Mac if you want to check it out, um, but it's it's like a yeah it's it's hard to describe exactly what it is, but they talk about it in it's an intense adventure for one to two players. It's got deathmatch, team strike, capture the flag. It's like an it's like a 2D esports game. <laughs> Cute robos, lots of upgradable guns, slow motion combat roles, and Tamable space hamsters, online up to eight players. Oh so, 
I mean, I don't know what it is, but right. I think it's just, you know, nice that they're able to spread their wings. It's being developed by a company called Oxi Games, um, but, but they're, you know, they're allowing Mojang to kind of work on it, and then it's going to be published by, I assume, Microsoft's Game Studios, since they are a part of... Microsoft. Yeah, I mean, your point is is not, you know, they're not shoehorning the, the studio into just making Minecraft clones. Correct. That is my point. Yeah, yeah. And actually, they were, you know, Microsoft was criticized um, a lot for, for kind of doing that with Rare, with the uh, Kinect. Yeah. And, right. And, and more recently, what Mike was saying with, uh, you know, the studio that's doing the new Gears. They were working on something, and they said, well, how about Gears? And, okay, we'll do that. Yeah. Whereas the outside... The outside perception is Microsoft came in and Phil Spencer put his, you know, yeah. banged his hand on the table and said, "You aren't doing this game. You're doing Gears and doing Gears from now on." And that's not how it happened. And I guess that was my point. Yeah. So, um, oh, a uh, Brian, you you were uh, you played Bloodborne, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't finish it, but I played it. <laughs> I don't know any. I don't know how many people actually did. You're not a real gamer unless you. <laughs> <laughs> so the first gameplay of Dark Souls was shown. Yeah. And uh, that looked pretty good. It's still not quite my cup of tea of a game, that but game I thought that would appeal hard. to you. Yeah. Yeah. It is old school hard. Yeah. That's what I hear, and that's I mean, probably why I hate it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah. No, you, you know, will rage quit. Bloodborne for me. I mean, I when I I used to love the, the ridiculously difficult games just for the sake of being difficult. Those types of games, but you know, it's it's probably because I'm older now. You know, I would like a an option to sort of, you know, like the grandfather option, so I could just get into it a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe learn a little That's bit. That's a good and idea. Then, yeah. and then Grandfather the, option. You know, and then go to the difficulty, difficulty <laughs> level where it's supposed to be. But <laughs> beautiful game, but I was just, oh, I was pulling my hair out of my head. Well, yeah. this will be right up your alley then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they showed that. I mean, they were. it was interesting that they were showing some third-party stuff you because. Know, yeah, but you know what's interesting about Dark Souls 3? After they showed it, the Xbox logo came up after that. Oh, it's because it was at their conference. Yeah. Don't, don't, you don't think there's. I, well, I'm only saying. What if there's? I, I'm wondering if there's a speculative. Not a chance. Like maybe some kind of marketing deal. Not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> not, I, not, I, 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 I know what you're saying. Not a chance. Yeah. There's no way. But, but I, you know, the fact that they're showing it there was, yeah. I thought, a good, a very good sign. Well, we've seen it twice now. We have. E3 and Gamescom. That's what. That's why I'm speculating. No, I. That's that's fair. I, I just don't think I. I don't think that's. I think they would have. They would have said. I. It, all that happened was, and this is the second time it's happened. There's been no like lead up to it. Nobody came out to talk about it afterwards. It was just true, yeah. here's our next trailer, and it happens to be Dark Souls, and nobody knows until they see it, and then it's on to the next game. You know. So, to you know, Homefront was shown today, and. Um, I don't think anybody realized Homefront: The Revolution was still in in development. No, but it, it's, I had no idea. Right, it certainly is. And so then they had somebody come out from uh, from the developer to the say Revolution? that the Xbox One was going to get an early access beta. Uh, so I think if Dark Souls was actually coming in some form of exclusivity to the Xbox One uh, by either uh, timed content or some stupid thing like that. I think they would have said it. Yeah, I don't think it's as big a game on the Xbox as it is on the PlayStation, to be honest. It's the not. Dark series. It's yeah. not. So, uh, I'll tell you what it is. Forza 6! <laughs> like how I segued right from Dark Souls and Homefront to Forza <laughs> yeah, 6. To an exclusive game. That it's to an exclusive yeah, game. So they finally showed some more. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It looks great. I love their racing in the rain trailer. Yeah. Um, just showing, I mean, just showing the, the 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 tracks at wet and at night, and I I, I, I don't know how I don't know how I'm going to survive until September. I don't know how, and it's weird because all I've seen so far 
are trailers. I haven't seen anybody sit with a controller in their hand and play this game. And yet, I am massively hyped for this game. I don't know how. Well, you can watch videos of Steven Spielberg played at E3 on YouTube. <laughs> you didn't see those? I did not see those. Yeah, they had a big setup, uh, three TV screens, the wheel, the cockpit, everything. And he sat and uh, played uh, Forza 6. Mm. I might have to look at that. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. I, I I secretly wish for a demo. You know, like, hey, Forza Horizon is... I did find it interesting that there was an interview with Dan Greenwald afterwards... And um, he was talking about how they're going to get 24 players on, you know, 24 cars at once mm-hmm. with weather, with um, nighttime and all this stuff and all the physics that go in it. Because I want to talk about this for a second uh, after I make this point and still make it 1080p60, which, of course, is, you know, the um, it, it's a sales number that people have to hit. But he talked about how there's continued development work on their Forza Tech engine with them and PlayStation, uh, PlayStation and Playground Games. I thought that was an interesting statement. Playground Games is still involved with them. And he said they, because they're a first-party studio, they had the luxury of running this stuff by the Coalition and 343i to get um, really deep into the hardware I thought that was an interesting statement. Like they're having, it's it, there's this. It almost sounds like there's more and more of a synergy going on in these development studios in house, and they're helping each other. I thought that was really an interesting statement that he made. Um, but if we go to so um, the the <laughs> the downplaying that I've heard, and unfortunately, like everything else, there there's downplaying is, well, it's not dynamic weather. Because, of course, Forza Horizon 2 and Drive Club have dynamic weather. And this is not. It, the, the, the tracks are going to have their own weather, and it's not going to be, you know, um, changing. Where is, uh, where, where is Forza 6 coming out on? What, what platform? On the Xbox One. Okay, and where where is Drive Club? Not on the Xbox One. Okay. So but but no. But okay. But, well, uh, but I. Well, this is true. I know. But I also brought up Forza Horizon Two. Mm-hmm. The reason I bring those two games up is I'm quite sure that if Turn Ten wanted to make the game 30 frames per second instead of 60, they could do the same dynamic weather and dynamic day night system as Forza Horizon Two. Well, I, I mean, they they're doing what they want to do. They're the developer. Exactly. So yeah. I mean, if you're going to, I mean, you know, we're getting to the point now where people are comparing, you know, the windshield wipers, you know, the windshield wipers aren't, <laughs> aren't, aren't realistic on, on that game. It, it's just, you're always going to have that. I personally, me, just me, that, that stuff, I just ignore it. You it, have to. It drives it's noise. It, it's just noise. Yeah. It means it, nothing. You know, what's interesting too, this, this slate of backwards compatible titles, I'm playing them and I was thinking to myself, you know, like Gears. I, Gears just showed up in my download queue because mm-hmm. I purchased it on the 360. And Shadow Complex is out. The uh, really great arcade title. That which came I, out. I, yes, which is on mine. Right. So I'm playing Gears uh, today, actually. And I'm playing it and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I remember when this came out and nobody, I, nobody asked about the, te- the technicalities behind the game. It was just, did you see that game? And yeah. the same thing happened with Uncharted 1. The same thing happened with games like, uh, you know, the first Infamous or, or you know, game, another game on the 360 that looked really good, like Mass Effect. And it reminded me of a time when we didn't do that. And that's not important. It's really not. So the idea of saying that, well, the weather isn't dynamic. Well, who cares that it's not dynamic? Yeah. Because it's a racer with 24 cars on the track. That's the standard now. So if a game comes out and doesn't have 24 – if a simulation racer comes out and doesn't have at least what Forza 6 has, is does that mean it's a failure? No. It's just – it's so ridiculous. Oh, it drives me nuts. But there, but those, It drives you nuts, Mike. <laughs> it does. It drives me batty. Yeah, I just laugh. 
No, I'd like to laugh if it wasn't for the fact that social media exists. This, you know, it's it's yeah. funny that it, back 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 in the last gen up until at least at least in the first half of the last gen and then previous gens on that. You had forums and you had IRC chat, but you didn't have oh social gosh. media. Yeah. Wow. You didn't IRC have chat. this wow. crap. And you don't have these these wars taking place over Twitter. Because, mm-hmm. you know, one game has this and the other game does that. So it just takes away, you know, it's taking away from it right now. We should, you know, it's taking, it's, we're, we're spending time talking about that well, we rather than to. talking about the game. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I, this, like I said, I don't know how I'm going to survive until September. Start so saving your pennies. I'm going to have to. Yeah. Or or you could start a uh, GoFundMe or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we could do Funny, fan funding yeah. on the we could do fan funding on the channel. Well, I I got it. While you're on the beach with your Surface playing Fable <laughs> with the Pip Boy, with the Pip Boy, you can walk around with a little basket <laughs> and take collections. <laughs> Please, sir, I Please. need Fable Six. <laughs> oh man! Please, sir. I no. like Fable. Oh my goodness! Hey, so um. They yeah, showed that be brutal for me too, Mike. I I'm, know. Because you know, I you know, I'm just thinking I'm like, how am I going to pay all these game, pay for all these games, and, and not get shit for it? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's my dilemma. <laughs> and, and and Halo Five, watching Halo Five multiplayer didn't help either today for me. Yeah, that's what I was going to go to next. Was the that segue? Yeah, nice segue. You're you're mind. getting you're learning. <laughs> that's learning. excellent, man. No, the Halo Five, um, the Halo Five new gameplay stuff that they were showing off, very, very impressive. I got to be honest uh, with you, I got excited. I mean, you know, because I, I used to, I used to be in a clan, I used to do competitive multiplayer, and wa- watching those two teams go at each other and capture the flag, and watching the pistols, the headshots, I got excited. Did you see the the flag jugglings back? Oh yeah, that's what we used to do back in the days. The map was huge. Yes, yeah, it was. The map was huge. Yeah. No, and you know, um, just another note to all the critics and and uh, haters out there. Uh, I realize that that esports to you might be goofy, and why did they why did they choose to do esports? They chose to do this in an esports method because that is the way of the future. Whether you like it or not, everything is good. When when ESPN dedicates part of one of their channels to covering esports, I hate to tell you, but esports is here to stay. Oh yeah, it's a big thing. Well, whenever the per- whenever the purse is a million dollars, obviously it's uh, a pretty serious thing. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I'm just saying. You know, people were, oh, the esports thing was so you know. Uh, yeah, it's so yeah. dorky. Why do they have to do that? Because that is what everything is going to. That is what Call of Duty is going to. That is what I mean. Look at look at something like Smite. Smite is is a MOBA that is part of esports. You know, League of Legends is esports. I mean, this stuff is just this is just how it is. People just have to get used to it and realize that this is why. Um, you know, this is why they did it that way because. Quite honestly, this is where the this is where gaming is headed. So, um, well, I think somebody at ESPN got fired for scrutinizing one of the for Colin Coward. Was it who was it? I think it was Colin Coward. Was that who it was? I think so. He was kind of like bashing esports. He questioned. Yeah, he why. said. He, yeah, he did. He said you yeah. could never. I would. I would rather. Oh, what did he say? I'm going to look it up. Um, look at look at Dota two. It's it's an eighteen million dollar. Uh, uh, tournament right now. Uh, absolutely. That. Yeah. That actually wasn't what he was kicked off of ESPN. No, that was what he was. Um, what he did him. say um, on one of his on his radio show, yeah, he was kicked off for something else. Which we're you know it's it's not gaming related, so we're not going Ooh. we're not going to go into it. But um, you know he said he said if I'm ever forced to cover guys playing video games, I will retire and move to a rural fishing village and sell bait. I mean, that's so... <laughs> I guess he wasn't a fan. But 
this is what uh, this just is what it is. This is where it's going. Yeah. So I, I now, are you guys gonna get the multiplayer for Halo Five? The uh, um, hey, I'm probably. I'm probably gonna do co-op most of the time. I'll play a little bit, but I'm not big on competitive. Yeah, I'm gonna do the yeah. co-op first. I might do a little. I might do a little bit of it, but I, it's mostly going to be the. I'm with uh, Brian. It's mostly going to be the. Uh, co-op. Uh, the co-op. The co-op, yeah. So, but so and you know a little shout out to to me for yelling at them for not being invested in custom consoles. Did you see the they're launching a limited edition one terabyte Halo Five console in October. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, it's going to have custom sounds. It's got a. It's beautiful. It's got a custom. Uh, Controller it has custom sounds. I believe yeah. so. Kind of like Forza, then. Yeah. Yep. And okay, cool. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. So I, hats off to them for I. You kind of thought they were going to do it. Yeah. But hats off for them actually doing it. I was I was happy to see them do it. Does this mean that you're going to get one mic? No. <laughs> I already have my Xbox One. Now I'm going to get Halo Five, but uh, you know I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to tell anybody who is a big Halo fan, though, and if they haven't bought one yet, that's what that's the the Xbox I'm going to shoot them towards. Because um, I think it's I think it's a nice looking console. No, it is. Yeah, you get a one terabyte Xbox One for three ninety. Is it three ninety nine? Uh, Halo yes, I believe so. And it comes with the game. It comes with Halo Five. Oh, that's a great deal. I think. Uh, hold on, hold on. Before I, you know what? I don't know if it's three ninety nine. Yeah, hang on. Okay. Let me let me double check that before yes. I once again raise my foot <laughs> directly up to my mouth. Um, it's the Hardy. It's the Halo Five Guardians bundle, mm-hmm. and let's see. It says four ninety nine. My fault. Four ninety nine. Wow, and that I comes with four ninety nine. Uh, I will tell you, it comes with. The custom console. Uh-huh. It comes with and the console. Wow, it looks beautiful. Uh, it comes with full download for Halo Five Guardians, the Warzone REQ bundle that includes fourteen premium requisition packs, Fotis class armor, and multiplayer emblem. It also includes a Guardian model by Metal Earth, Halo: The Fall of Reach animated series, Blue and Osiris Team dossiers, and Spartan Locks classified orders. None of which has any interest to me, but um, for those of you, this is a, it's a collector's edition. It, this is a collector's yeah. console, so you're getting more than just the game and the custom console. Yeah, so. you're getting, yeah. Um, and you, oh, 14-day gold trial as well. So it is four ninety nine, but this is nice looking. Uh, no doubt about it. No connect in the box? No connect in the box. Ooh. That ship has sailed. And actually, that ship not only sailed, someone fired a torpedo at it, <laughs> and it has gone to the bottom of the sea. I have said my piece. I have lost friends over my saying my piece, and I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, well, that's insane. Yeah. People aren't your I, friend because Well, they weren't – right. They were – twi- well, I'm sorry. I lost Twitter. I lost Twitter followers, and yeah. I lost a very – I lost my original podcast over it, or part partially over it. So – I, I, yeah. So basically, oh, wow. you know, it's it's what happens when you when you dare to uh, be normal. Be yes. Be normal. Be normal. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to, to think. You dare to think rationally. Yeah. yeah. So um, to kind of round about our Gamescom coverage, uh, there is a there was Rise of the Tomb Raider gameplay two gameplay trailers now were shown. So first they did a kind of the the stealth mode killing Lara killing machine mode, which is what I've heard now, even though, you know, that's not really remotely true, but it's okay, whatever. Um and then they showed off a, a trailer on some of the new tombs and showing off the the largeness of the map and mm-hmm. things like that. Um I I looked 
a little earlier because we tweeted out on the official channel that they moved the date to the 13th. It turns out that I think they only moved the European date to the 13th. I still believe that the uh, U.S. date is the 10th. The U.S. date is the 10th. Yes. So they're still holding on to the 10th. I don't know why. Um, I think they're going to try to sell this game on its merit. I, I, uh, I'm not saying it's not it doesn't have the, the pedigree or the merit. I'm just saying that, you know, if you're going to invest all this money and you want to put it forward, you want to push the franchise, you do everything that you can. And that includes giving it its own window to launch. Yeah. Cause it's uh what fallout four is that day, right? It's, yeah. Same day. Fallout yeah. 4. yeah. Yeah. I think they may be banking on people that aren't buying fallout four. I, I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that's the yeah. that's the right move, but who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> Where do they live? What? what was that? What was that movie? Who is this imbecile? Yeah. Who is yeah. this? Oh, it's Superman! Person? Right, Sing- Superman who is too. This singular person that's not buying Fallout Four. <laughs> I I don't know. I assume they're out there. I have to think they're out there. I don't know. I, you know, maybe they're buying both. Maybe they're buying both. Possible. I I, I would still. I still think that it should have its own window. Yeah, yeah, I, th- yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, you invest, like you say, you invest all the money in that franchise. Now the game now looks the game great. great. You know, you know, you give it, give it, give it both give legs to stand on. Yeah, yeah because yeah. you know, holiday 2016 when it launches on PlayStation, it's going to have its own little window with not a lot around it. True. That we know of yet. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can. I could pretty much guarantee that. I mean, it's going to have its own little window, its own little launch party. Yeah. Lara comes home. Remember? Lara, Lara I know you keep home. calling it. Yeah. 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 Well, um, uh, so, so I know you're I, excited about this, though, Brian. Oh, I love Tomb Raider. Big Tomb Raider fan. I can't wait to play it. Yeah, I was really impressed what they showed today. I oh, was too. Yeah, it looked really, really good. So, and then uh, they. They did the mic drop for whatever they thought was the mic drop at the end, where Phil Spencer said, thank you for everybody coming, and then said, oh, we got one more thing. And then Bonnie Ross came out from 343i, and I know the entire collective universe said, ah, Master Chief Collection's coming to PC. And then he announced Halo Wars 2, which um, there are a lot of Halo Wars fans out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, the, first uh, one, the first one was the highest-selling RTS on console. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I'm not an RTS guy. I'm a Halo yeah, guy. Yeah, me either. You know, it didn't really wow me the way I'm sure it did other people. Well, and here's what um, here's what's cool. So, it's a combination of 343i and uh, Creative Assembly, who Ooh. made Alien Isolation and Total War. So, they got a very good developer behind it. Alien Isolation was a good game. Yeah. Um, and but it's an RTS though. Right? But it, well, from the teaser, I'm assuming it's still an RTS. Yeah. It there they showed a teaser, and that was about it. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm assuming that it is following in the footsteps of Halo Wars. Yeah. So it was highly highly anticipated. <laughs> I don't know by who because every, it was a surprise to everybody. <laughs> um, I, everything's high. Isn't everything highly anticipated now? Oh, that's the marketing speak, you know. No, well, that's our yeah. Our pod, our podcast is highly anticipated. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and that was so that kind of rounded about the uh, Gamescom conference. Um, one other small thing that they did announce, and uh, this will be something that uh, would be a, a slightly nice debate because I I know. Um, I know Brian and and I don't know about I didn't hear anything from you Enrique but I know he's not uh, the most excited about it. They are um, they they announced a chat pad for the Xbox One controller, and uh, I've already had a couple of arguments online about it. Yeah. Um, not you? No, not me. This was actually so it's funny. This is the one thing I was I was happy about with Microsoft, and other people were complaining about it. You know what I was waiting for? Because I think it's the, the crazy arguing stuff is funny, and nobody brought it up yet. I'm going to say it, and somebody's going to talk about it tomorrow. With the touchpad, right? There's one button solely dedicated to screenshots. 
I was waiting for that person to say, well, I've had that button on my PlayStation 4 controller since launch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody you said guys, that yet. You guys are late to the party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you know, whatever. I, those, it's, I, you're right. <laughs> and, and you know, you just go, well, that's fine. We've had... Uh, oh, boy, here it comes. We've been able to suspend and resume our games. Oh, <laughs> oh there he goes. He set him up. <laughs> well, I, I, you know me. I do not get into those stupid arguments. I, I think that's ridiculous stuff. You know, uh, you know yeah. who had it first? Be, who cares who had it first? Yeah, if yeah, everybody really gets it, it's the, uh, touch pad. right. It's just my thing. So the yeah. the the chat pad for me. So you gave it a a very big meh on yeah. online. So and then um uh you know and then my 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 buddy Mooch who's going well you know I've got my phone out and I can do smart glass and that's a very valid point you know if you I I like the smart glass app I really honestly do but my 360 controller always has the chat pad uh enabled um or always has it connected rather and that's what I'm going to do with this chat pad cuz I'm getting this chat pad if I want to send you a message or if I want to uh, share something, a screenshot on Twitter or something like that, the time it takes me to whip out my phone, load up the app, get to the remote part, and then type it in and go, I, it's going to be it's going to be faster for me to just move my thumbs down to the chat pad and type. And there's two programmable con- uh, buttons on this chat pad, so you could actually assign to it screenshots and recordings or a specific app if you want to assign like the party app to it or your achievement app um and it's you know so that kind of thing is is uh, that appeals to me as somebody who does not want to just reach for my phone every time i want to go type something in okay <laughs> I I see I see I have I see I've converted you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I'm indifferent. I you know, it, it's something that I probably won't pick up, but you know. Yeah, I'm I'm getting it. I mean, it's just yeah. it's a per- look, it is a it is a a matter of personal preference. There's, there's that's not a Yeah. Yeah. Everything is. everything is. Everything is, right? Are you sure? Yeah, j- just like that video we saw the other day that Brian uh, shared with us. <laughs> personal preference. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I can't. <laughs> I, I cannot unsee that. Yeah. I, I can never unsee that video. It's it's not a podcast topic. No, it really isn't. <laughs> you no. know, the, it, it kind of, but it was it, the way it was presented. It was kind of like a, a documentary. Like a, yeah, you know, with the guy with the British accent, it kind of made it seem legit. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. Uh-huh. It's moving it's just on. yeah moving on. It's not for public consumption on our podcast, but yeah. oh boy. So well, we're not really we're not giving details. So yeah, no. So um, uh, that about covered all of the Gamescom stuff. Um, you know, look, uh, folks. Uh, oh, wait, you know what? You know what though? You what know, one game that I saw that re- I think we talked about it earlier. Um, oh geez, what was it? Uh, it was an indie game. It looks scary. Oh, We Happy Few. Yeah. yeah. We did not that talk cool. about We Happy Few. Yeah, that was cool. That was creepy. That was kind of creepy, show, but I liked it. Yeah, they didn't show anything gameplay-wise, just like the premise of it. The premise of it, yeah. Yeah, but that... But I thought it was kind of cool, though. That music, okay. that that song. It was disturbing. It was disturbing. It made me think of Clockwork Orange for some reason. I don't know why, but it did. A little bit. A little bit of that mixed in with... Um, uh, yes. Yeah, the guy with the uh, rabbit face. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Yeah. Man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was – now, that's a holiday 2016 game as well. And that is first on Xbox, so it's another one that they kind of locked up some kind of timed thing on. Um, and uh, – I'll tell you what, the indies are coming out with some really, really interesting things or titles. Yeah. They are. And, and, they, can and take, I, uh, they can take those chances. It's a yeah, it's no, a different it's great, though, but it's great. It's a different change of pace. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you it's a you're, change of pace. Yeah, you're reviewing a game. I've got uh, Submerge yeah. getting ready to come out uh, for review. You've got Phantom Break, and then we're we're trying to look at some of these um, in a whole different light. So, 
um, I like what they're doing, and you know I think that every they're you're starting to see a lot more universal praise on the ID and Xbox program, and I think that's a I think that's a good thing for them. It's what they need. Yeah, um, no, I agree. So I agree, and, and you know it adds diversity to the lineup too, which isn't a bad thing. Not Options, at all. You know, not a bad thing at all. You know, I, I you know I'm I'm not under the belief that everything has to be a AAA title to be enjoyable. It really doesn't. Yeah. yeah, I used to think like that though, but you know, I, I don't now, but I did. Um, but, well, I mean, um, you got you know, for all the for all the the chuckle chuckle laugh laugh about you know our worms conversation last uh, <laughs> last podcast. The truth is, that's very much a uh, not a triple A title, but hours of fun. You know, hours yeah. of fun. That's a game you don't just play in one sitting. That's how that's that's you know it's not you, you you beat it and you're done, you know those kind of games are are great and a lot of companies are, are working on it. That's what made that's what made iDarb so special, you know. Yeah. So, all right, I do think that does cover now. Um, Brian, did I miss we did, anything? We didn't yeah, talk about Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Amber's not back yet. <laughs> Yeah, we covered everything. We did. I think yeah, we covered we it all. Um, I think we missed. Uh, well, I mean, we didn't talk about FIFA 16, but oh, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, not really. You know, though there is a bundle for that coming out, which is good. You know, there's always a good bundle for for FIFA. Is that only in Europe? Um, the they're advertising it on Xbox One site uh, as a. Uh, actually, they they're advertising a bunch of bundles on on the main Xbox site. Uh, there is. Uh, it does not look like it's specific. Let's take a quick look because there's a Madden bundle, and there is a. Yeah, there's a. There's an Xbox One FIFA, 16 one terabyte bundle for 3.99. That looks like you can get it, here, oh, and wow. uh, it also has EA access in it. Uh, comes out September 15th. Yeah, you can pre-order it, so I'm I'm assuming it is also for North America. So, um, you know, they have the legend stuff, the 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 you know, the uh, the extra yeah. um you know, I I'm not a FIFA guy, so it doesn't matter to me. But I know a lot of people are. Yeah. Um, when's EA's conference? At 4 a.m. So, 4 a.m. like in a couple hours, 4 a.m.? Yeah, like in a couple hours, 4 a.m. So uh, to our wonderful Twitter followers, um, you'll excuse us if we don't live tweet that one. Actually, Mike will be live tweeting that. <laughs> Mike will not be live tweeting the EA conference. We will definitely bring you anything that comes of it, but we will not be tweeting. The, we will not be live tweeting that one. Sorry. We should, get, we, should get, we should get Amber to live tweet it. She's closer to the time zone there. Yeah. Man, I'm surprised that she's not there. Sony is showing games tomorrow as well. Are they? Ooh, yeah. Yes. Ah. I really want to see, uh, what's it called? Horizon. Horizon yes. Zero Dawn, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, they're going to have a booth. So, yeah, people need to understand that while they did not have a press conference, they do they're have there. a booth. They are they are there. You know, all three of the, of the main, you know, the big three are there. Just Microsoft had, Microsoft had the conference. Um, so, you know, don't discount what Sony's doing. And, you know, to our, to the people who have been listening to us all this time, I, I understand and realize that tonight sounded a lot like a, a Microsoft Xbox podcast, but you guys have to understand they controlled the news today. That was, you know, in fact, they've controlled the news pretty much, you know, if, if I'm being perfectly honest, how much Sony news have we really gotten over the last couple of weeks? It hasn't been much. No. And we've Once tried the to. Our show starts, so it'll be. It'll be a lot that will be news. right, and we'll talk yeah. about right. That'll be where our where our you know, and then we'll be able to same thing, say the same thing. Oh, we're sorry, this sounds like a Sony PlayStation podcast, but <laughs> um, we're going to be fair to that. We're going to cover that just like we covered this. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, the Paris Game Show. Actually, see what Sony has. Yeah, and to see what the Paris yeah. Game Show is all about for yeah. you know, what it's worth. So. All right. Well, another one is in the books. Um, we're again sorry that uh, that Danny had to roll out on us, um, but we will we'll get him back on again and kind of make up that time. Um, 
he's he's been distracted today and understandably so so we want to make sure that uh you know we we uh we get him back on um amber's coming back from vacation so uh when did she come back she's coming back i think over the weekend i think and then um i'm going on vacation this coming week so it looks like um unless i can sneak out and podcast. <laughs> it looks like we may be skipping a week and uh, podcasting in the picking, sweet, in the pit boy. Picking it back up. Picking it back up. Uh, not this coming uh, week, but the following. And then we'll have. Uh, this will be our our regular team, the four of us. Uh, and uh, I know she's looking forward to coming back. Uh, it, word is she has a destiny tattoo. Oh. Dude, I'm telling you, Brian, you haven't met her yet. Wait till you wait till you meet her. She is wonderful, and she is destiny. She is destiny. She I don't know how she does not work. To destiny. She <laughs> right. Her name. She could change her name to destiny and be happy. Uh, yeah. Last name Guardian. Destiny Guardian. Right. Destiny Guardian. Oh, oh God, by the like way, God. just one piece of non Gamescom news. Did you guys know that Nolan North is taking over um, all the ghost dialogue in Taken King? No. They are actually scrubbing. If I read this right, if I read this right, is this breaking news? I, it might be. Wasn't um, he just ending the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I was, but I totally forgot. Forbes. This is on Forbes today. They recasted. They are scrubbing, totally yeah, scrubbing no Peter Dinklage right. from the game. They are oh, erasing. They get rid of what's his face? <laughs> yeah, they're getting rid of Dinklage. Why? I don't know. Apparently because they think he was not good. They've replaced him with Nolan North, who of course is um, the voice of Nathan Drake and a whole bunch of other uh, video game characters. And according to this, it's not that they're just doing it for the Taken King. Apparently, they are re-recording every line from the base what? game. So that there is no Peter Dinklage in the game anymore. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm sure Peter Dinklage doesn't care. He still got paid. Well, yeah, he's still... Yeah. Right. He still got paid, and he's still in that wonderful Pixels movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just... I thought I thought that was interesting, that they weren't just... It wasn't That's just the... It wasn't just that they were replacing him in the in the Taken King, or the fact they were replacing him at all, but they were scrubbing him out of the whole game. I need to tweet Amber about this. Yeah, I want. We need her. We need her um, opinion on this. Her input. Yeah. So, um, so okay. So that really is that really is so, the end of our podcast. So, I think we have so we, covered everything. We ended up squeezing Destiny in. <laughs> we did end up squeezing Destiny in after all. <laughs> All right, so let's go through the uh, the regular stuff. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, please comment below. Uh, we're starting to get some comments, and we like it. We want to interact with you guys, so please, uh, you know, keep the fanboy stuff out, of course. But uh, tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. You know, uh, we've been lucky that we've only had a couple of uh, thumbs downs here and there. But don't just dislike and and move on. Tell us, you know, let us know what you don't like about it, so we can. Uh, take a look at that, and and you know we want this to be the people's podcast, so to speak. So uh, you know, we appreciate. We've gotten a lot of compliments, guys. A lot of compliments yeah. on our podcast. And uh, um, Brian, you coming aboard has been a big part of that. So we we really appreciate you Absolutely. you being with us. Um, you guys are the only ones who do like 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time podcasting <laughs> well it's because that's when the wife and kids are in bed it's and i can crazy time so but uh you know you being on is is has really given us a lot of a lot of depth and a lot of uh uh great stuff and having amber back i think is going to make us a great team so we've gotten a lot of of compliments and that's wonderful you know let us know but let us also know what you you know what what we could work on uh, or just let us know what your thoughts are about gamescom or any of the things we've talked about you know if, what what are you guys uh, our listeners what are you guys excited about 
And what do you guys what do you guys want to see? What did you want to see? What what did you think was missing? So please comment below. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, subscriptions are, are a great way for us to, to continue to grow and to continue to bring you some extra content like the reviews that are coming up soon. Um, and uh, follow us on Twitter at OG underscore NL Gaming. Uh, we try to bring you as much news without the filter as we can. Uh, we live tweeted the Gamescom conference this morning, and even though we're not live live stream, you know, live tweeting a 4 a.m. conference, uh, we'll live tweet whatever we can uh, going forward on for Gamescom. Um, so, gentlemen, is there anything else on the docket tonight? Nope. All nope. Right. All right. So, Enrique, thank you so much. Brian, thank Absolutely. you so much. Once again, a wonderful podcast. Um, on behalf of the original Next Level Gaming, everybody have a wonderful week, safe weekend, 